Hey guys, Nike here. This is the updated condition damage engineer guide for group play Dungeons and Fractals after the June 23rd specialization patch. This build is competitive with the Berserker group NG, and in fact, after 14 seconds or so, it has higher DPS overall than the Berserker NG. Assuming perfect or near perfect rotations, this is the highest sustained DPS build in the game for PvE. The Condition Damage Engineer build is designed primarily for speedrun groups, is ideally used in place of the Thief in the standard team comp for any dungeons where you don't need the utility of Shadow Refuge. It is especially effective in level 80 instances where boss fights tend to take longer, and the extra vulnerability this build pr produces will be especially useful. Lastly, I want to touch on the downside of this build, Conjure Frost Frostbow. As a Condi build, it does not do especially strong damage when picking up an Ice Bow, so tactics based around four players burning down a boss with Ice Bow quickly are unlikely to be as effective as using a Thief who excels in the, with the Ice Bow in hand. That said, in longer fights, this is much less of an issue, and this build is definitely worthy of inclusion in meta groups. Let's move on to the gear and get into it. Alright guys, let's talk gear. The armor I recommend is Sinister. We're going to go with five superior rune of the nightmares. This is going to give us condition duration and condition damage boost big time. The sixth bonus, not really so good for us. Uh, that's only going to troll us. What we need to do is f find something for the six that's going to maximize our amount of points. Um, I recommend Coral Orb. It's going to give you uh, the most amount of stat points that you can get that we want all in this build. You can additionally use a rune of the Antitoxin, which is going to give you 28 more condition damage. Um, overall, the, the end result is going to be about the same. This is going to give you a little bit more stat points, so I recommend Coral Orb. For weapons, we have Pistol Pistol. The first pistol is going to be Sinister with Superior Sigil of Bursting to give us 6% additional condition damage. Our other pistol will also be Sinister with S Superior Sigil of Geomancy. This is going to give us three stacks of bleeds, with a base 10 per second, 10 second duration with a 9 second cooldown. When we are fully maxed out, we're going to have 100% bleed duration. So essentially this is going to end up giving us about 6 stacks of bleeds on average over time, which is a pretty hefty increase. For trinkets, I do of course recommend Sinister. I know you guys don't want to hear it, but I'm telling you, uh, even though you can use Rampager stats, it's going to be way, way, way more effective if you guys do your your uh, living story challenges, get your sinister trinkets unlocked, and then grind silver waste for that sweet, sweet sinister gear. Highly recommend you guys go out and do it. It's time consuming, but if you are serious about playing one of the highest DPS builds in the game and burn things down, you need to do it. Take my word for it. Uh, let's move on to traits. All right, traits, we're gonna take explosives, firearms, and tools. In explosives, we go with glass cannon, shape charge, and shrapnel. The first two are simple DPS increases. Even though this is a condition damage build, those are our best choices for the slots, and it will make our damage go up the most overall. The Grandmaster trait, shrapnel, is the key to the build. The passive bleeds that you get uh, from your explosions is going to add up and is going to give us significant damage over time. When we are fully buffed, these are going to last an extremely long amount of time, and the boss will constantly have bleeds. Firearms, we're going to go with Chemical Rounds. Chemical Rounds is amazing in this build. It allows you, uh, unlike most other things in the game, to go above the 100% condition duration cap. That means your Blowtorch, your Static Shot, and your Poison Dart Volley are going to have insane condition duration on them. So... Chemical rounds, always awesome. Uh, at the master level, we take pinpoint distribution. This is a huge boost to our condition damage. It's adding about 200 or so condition damage when we're fully buffed. Pretty good, very, very useful for us in this build. Grandmaster level incendiary powder. The passive burns are great, but what we're really here for is the 33% burn duration, duration increase. This is going to give us up to the 100% burn duration cap and make sure that our burning hits insanely hard in this build. In tools, taking reactive lenses over Static Discharge. Static Discharge has a weird animation and can interrupt your skills and screw up your rotations. We don't want that. We'd rather have the free stun break on demand from reactive lenses. 
Doesn't it's not much, but it's better than the alternative. Master level, we're gonna take takedown round. This, again, this is not a direct damage build; it's just a condition damage build. But the extra passive damage from the takedown round is going to add up quite a bit over time and help us out a lot. If you find that you're in groups that aren't maintaining swiftness very well and you're really struggling, feel free to switch to streamline kits. That'll give you perma swiftness and allow you to get through the dungeons faster. But for straight DPS, we're looking at takedown round. And at the Grandmaster level, we take Adrenal Implant that's going to give us increased endurance regeneration. It's really a quality of life, life issue. The other two options aren't that amazing in terms of boosting our DPS or doing anything that we useful want. So we can just go with the Adrenal Implant, enjoy it, and like it. These are our traits. These, in conjunction with the gear and in conjunction with having a good rotation, is going to get you where you need to be for among the highest DPS in the game. So let's talk consumables real quick. As with any Condi build, guys, consumables are the absolute key to giving us the good DPS that we need to be to be competitive with Berserker builds. For food, I recommend Rare Veggie Pizzas. These are going to give us 40% condition duration and 70 condition damage. Really, nothing else comes close to these. Nothing beats these. If you're on a budget, you can get Koi Cakes. If you're even on a more extreme budget, you can get Super Veggie Pizzas. Super Veggie Pizzas are only a 4% duration drop-off. And I think they only cost like two silver compared to like 20 or 30 silver for rare veggie pizzas. So super veggie pizzas, you're not trading away very much. It's a great budget option. Go with it. For our other slot, we can take toxic focusing crystals. These are the absolute best. They are expensive, and but they're good for a reason. 100 condition damage and 10% duration. Nothing you can get here is going to beat that. If you're on a budget, you can go with master tuning crystals. Uh, if you don't if even master tuning crystals are too ex too expensive for you I do not recommend getting one of the lower level crystals. They don't really do anything They don't add enough But what does what would do, do actually more than one of the lower level tuning crystals are just the standard slaying potions Yes, this isn't a direct damage build, but the direct damage boost is pretty hefty with the 10% or the 9% and You uh, will get more out of that than you will from using one of these low level tuning crystals that are only going to add like 60 condition damage to your build um, but it is important that you guys use at least something. Even if you don't use, uh, even if you're using dungeon potions, you should at least use super veggie pizzas. The 36% condition duration is key. I cannot express enough how important it is with a condition damage build to have the right nourishment. All right, so we'll quickly go over slot skills and then DPS rotations. All right, guys, let's discuss DPS rotations. The absolute optimal DPS rotation requires very significant kit swapping to achieve the maximum 20k DPS this build is capable of. However, I don't view that rotation as particularly realistic in active combat, so I'm going to show you a more achievable rotation instead. However, for reference, I will include a link below to the DPS spreadsheet for the build that does include uh, a list of the most optimal rotation in case any of you engineer masters out there want to try your hand at it and perfect it and utilize it. Um, so the way I'm gonna recommend is that we're gonna begin with an initial burn application as quick as possible to ensure that we ramp up our Kandi damage and stay competitive with Berserker. The way we're gonna start every fight is by activating incendiary ammo, swap to flamethrower, drop napalm, bomb kit, firebomb, and then after firebomb go to pistol and blowtorch. So that is our initial burn application. That's going to put around 20 to 22 stacks of burning on the boss that we're fighting right off the bat. So we're going to be in really good shape. So after our initial burn application, we're going to want to go to Grenade Kit. In Grenade Kit, you want to start with Shrapnel Grenade because it's our most powerful, hardest hitting attack. Shrapnel Grenade, then Grenade Barrage, then Poison Grenade. That's our good Condi Grenades once those are on cooldown. We go back to pistol, use static shot, poison, dart, volley, and then we can go back to bomb kit, fire bomb, concussion bomb, and guess what? Back to grenade kit, shrapnel grenade will be off cooldown, and then freeze grenades off cooldown, and then we can auto attack and grenade a couple times, swap back to pistol, and blowtorch ready to go again. And then after blowtorch, back to grenades, then you'll, you should have your grenade barrage, you should have shrapnel grenade, and your poison grenade should be close to coming off cooldown, and you can auto attack a couple times. Uh, and this is basically the way it goes. You want to always make sure you're maximizing your burns. 
That means if you know that your firebomb is off cooldown, use it. If you know your blowtorch is off cooldown, use it. The three most important skills are blowtorch, firebomb, and shrapnel grenade. There's no skill on your bar that you should prioritize over those three. So if any of those three are off cooldown, use them. That is the way to ensure you're maximizing your DPS. You don't want to be wasting your time uh, using poison dart volley, for example, while blowtorch is off cooldown, or while firebomb is off cooldown, or while shrapnel grenades off cooldown. Your other skills, the your poison dart volleys, your static shots, your concussion bombs, these are nice. These are and even poison grenade and freeze grenade. These are all nice skills. They all contribute to our DPS. But you want to make sure you're prioritizing the money skills of blowtorch, firebomb, and shrapnel grenade. If you guys prioritize those, you will keep your damage high and you will be melting bosses. So this is it guys, I hope you enjoyed the updated Condition Damage Engineer build for group play and I would be happy to answer any questions you guys have or read any tips some of you experienced NGs would like to share in the comments. Thank you guys so much for watching and I hope you guys really do enjoy this build and I can't wait to hear uh, any success stories that you guys have ripping stuff up with what could be, uh, in the right hands, the highest DPS build in the game.